Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now going to be going through this statistics S1 international A level at Excel a paper from June 2021. Um, I'm going to start off with question number one. Here is a question we have about probability. It says there are seven red counters, three blue counters, and two yellow counters in a bag. Gina selects a counter at random from the bag and keeps it. If the counter is yellow, she does not select any more counters. If the counter is not yellow, she randomly selects a second counter from the bag. Complete the tree diagram. Okay. Okay, so there are seven red counters and three blue counters and two yellow counters. So in total, we have 12 counters, as we can see from here. So if there are um, three blue counters, the probability of picking a blue is going to be three out of 12. Okay, let me just get this sorted out. That's 3 out of 12, so I'll put 3 over 12 here. And if there are two yellow counters, then the probability of picking yellow from the first pick is going to be 2 over 12. So I'll leave this in, in this form for now. I could write this as a quarter or 1 over 6. I can leave it in this form, no problem. Then it says, <clears throat> oh, then we have to do, then it says if the counter is not yellow, she randomly selects a second counter. Okay, so now, so she picks a yellow, then she doesn't pick any more. Right, that's why yellow stops here. But if she picks any other color, she continues. So if she picked a red first, okay, she doesn't replace them in the bag, right? Okay, she selects a counter random and keeps it. So she doesn't put it back in the bag. So once she's picked a red, suppose she picked a red first, there are still six reds left in the bag, and there are 12 counters in the bag, okay, or balls, whatever, counters, yes. There are still 12 counters. So there are 11 counters in the bag, what I'm talking about. Okay, because she's picked one red and she's picked one counter from the bag. So there's only 11 counters remaining in the bag. Okay, so six red out of 11. But if she picked a red first, there's still three blue counters in there. So there's going to be three blue counters, but 11 counters altogether because one of them has been taken, which was that red one. And similarly, there's still two yellow counters in there if she picked a red first out of 11 counters. However, if the first pick was a... Um, blue counter there are still seven red counters in the bag in which case the probability of picking a red in the second pick would be seven out of 11 why 11 because one of the counters the blue one has been taken if she picked a blue first then there's only two blue counters left out of 11 and if she picked a blue first there's still two yellow counters out of 11 okay because there's two yellow counters to begin with so those are those possibilities and of course if she picks a yellow she doesn't pick any more because that's what it states in the question if the counter is um, not yellow she selects a second counter that means well it tells you if the counter is yellow she does not select any more counters that's why this one stops there okay so that's the answer to part a just completing the tree diagram so that's done correctly now we've got to do part b okay so i've taken this question and i've brought the um diagram and reduced it in size and put it on this so we can see what's going on a bit more clearly now it says question number one it says give a uh, part b given that gina has selected a yellow counter find the probability that she has two counters so this is kind of like conditional probability and we know that the probability of a given b okay one of the formulae that we've learned for this is the probability of a intersection b divided by the probability of B so that's what's given probability of B uh, it says given that so it's probability of A given B so that's the thing that's given and that's the intersection between uh, what was given and the, the the other possibility so it's saying find the probability that she has two counters given that she selected a yellow counter so what this translates to is find the probability that she has two counters given that she has picked a yellow counter that's what we're looking for so if you look at if you think about it in this sense this is the probability of having two counters intersection with having a yellow counter divided by the probability of having a yellow counter if we find that we found that conditional probability so we've limited the sample space to just uh, all the cases where a yellow counter has been picked all right and we're finding from those what's the probability of her having two counters so basically the probability of a yellow being picked, okay, which I'm going to put over here, I think, because I need more space. 
All right, so the probability of a yellow being picked, that's what we have to find now. The probability of picking a yellow is going to equal 2 over 12. That's one, that's one case. Okay, and then you're going to have this case and this case. Okay, those are the probabilities of having a yellow picked. So you're going to have this outcome and this outcome plus this outcome. So it's 2 over 12 plus, now this outcome, to find the probability of this outcome, which is red and yellow, and this outcome, which is blue and yellow, okay, is going to be by multiplying along the branches. So it's going to be plus 7 over 12 multiplied by 2 over 11 plus, and for this outcome, it's 3 over 12 multiplied by 2 over 11. That will be the probability of picking a yellow, which is a sample space that we're looking for looking at. So we can just stick this in the calculator to make life easier. So you have 2 over 12. Just be very careful when you're doing these calculations in case you make a mistake. Plus you have 7 over 12. We don't really have to put these brackets here because it's going to use bid mass. It's going to multiply before adding. So plus 2 over 11. Okay, and you're going to have plus 3 over 12 multiplied by 2 over 11. Okay, that gives us 7 over 22. That's 7 over 22. That's our sample space, not 12. 7 over 22. Okay, um, that's P. That's the probability of picking a Y. Now we've got to find the probability of picking two counters intersection with yellow. Okay, two counters intersection with um, a yellow. All right, so that will be the probability of picking two counters intersection with yellow. All right, so basically you're going to exclude this, this one here. Okay, because this is picking a yellow but not two counters. So basically we just need these two. That will be the probability of having two counters and one of them being yellow. All right, so that's the probability that we're looking for, those two combined together. All right, so it's, it, it's basically the same as this excluding the 2 over 12. Okay, so you can say that the probability of this is going to be 7 over 22 minus 2 over 12. Okay, so that's just take away 2 over 12 from this answer, and that will give us, that's 5 over 33. That's the probability of picking two counters, and one of them is yellow. Okay, we have to exclude this because this is picking one counter, and it's yellow. We don't want that. We want two counters and also uh, one of them is ye uh, yellow. So now we can say that the probability that we're looking for, which is the probability of having two counters given that, um, you know, you've picked a yellow, all right, there is going to be um, the intersection of this. So it's going to be 5 over 33 divided by 7 over 22, which is 5 over 33 times 22 over 7. So this cancels with this, gives you 2 over 3. So you're left with 10 over 21. And there's your answer for part B. And I think that's the whole question here. So quite a short question. All right, so that's how you deal with this conditional probability. Okay, so it's something important, this formula for us to realize what it means and how to apply it. The probability of A given B is the probability of the intersection of A and B over the probability of B. It's like when you limit your sample space to just what B is. Okay, It can be understood using Venn diagrams in a way, just the concept of it. It's like when you have two uh, uh, events and there's a, some sort of overlap between them. That's A and B. This would be, the probability of A given B would be where you think, okay, the probability of A given B. So we're only considering B now. That's the sample, sample space we're considering. And the probability of A given B would be the part of B, which is A, which is this section here, which is the intersection. Okay, so that's the probability of A intersection B. And your sample space is just only B, nothing else. Okay, you're limiting the sample space to whatever's here. Okay, so that, that shaded area, probability divided by the, you know, the probability of just that circle B would be the answer to that if you're thinking about it in terms of Venn diagrams. Okay, so there's the answer 
to this question number one from this paper. Other questions from this particular paper of June 2021 S1, you can find in this playlist that will, the link will appear on the top right here. Underneath that, you will find other questions that are related to probability um, from S1. Um, you can subscribe to my channel if you wish by clicking on this link. And at the top of the page, right there at the top, you will find a link to other um, S1 papers you might want to watch. And in the description of the video, you can find other papers, the international A-level papers, P1, P2, P3, um, P4, M1. And also you can find a link to some IGCSE papers as well. Thank you for watching and see you soon.